Doug Adams here from Run DNA. I want to give you a quick overview of what training load is and how we use it in the Run DNA app to help people reach their full potential. So if you run, you know that running injuries are a big part of this, but we also care about performance. So we need to track what's called training load because training load errors account for 60% of the running injuries that we see. So what is training load? It's, it's a basic way to quantify the amount of workouts that you're doing. And it's a product of the duration and the intensity of your workouts. So within the app on the dashboard, you'll see a chart that looks like this. And what this is at a basic level is there's a couple numbers above each of the weeks. The week on the far left is the current week, and the weeks to the right of that are the preceding weeks. That number is how much training you have accumulated during that week. So our current week is kind of a running average, but our past week show us what we did. Um, and each week starts on Monday, so it's Monday through Sunday with that. And we have a range that you can look at, uh, kind of a high and low of where you should be, so that you're in this sweet spot where you're improving your performance, but um, you're not increasing your risk of injury. So this chart will give you that and help you to plan and basically understand what you can do from a training load perspective for that week. We also match this up with something called acute to chronic ratios. Because just because we define a week starting on Monday doesn't mean our body is fresh and ready to go. Quite the opposite a lot of times. I know Sunday is run day for me, so Monday morning I'm pretty shot actually a lot of times if I do my long run or get a good hard workout on Sunday. So we also have to compare the acute, which is the preceding seven days, to our chronic, which is an average from the four weeks prior to those seven days. And if we look at that number, we see if we stay between 80 and 130 percent, we're often in that sweet spot for injury. So this is a progression, if you've heard of the 10 percent rule, that really doesn't apply and we see that we need to be more scientific about it and a lot of the research is pointing towards us. So if you just want a quick overview, that is what training load is and the acute to chronic ratios so that you can start using in the app. I'm going to explain it a little bit more for anybody who'd like to stick around a little bit more and, and learn how we're doing this. Just one final note if you're going to leave, make sure that you're using your rate of perceived exertion, your RPE in order to calculate this number because that's the way that the app calculates it. So that being said, let's go a little bit deeper. And he said this oversimplification simplification is that it's a quantification of the stress from activity on your body. And why this matters is because we balance that stress to get optimal performance while reducing our risk of injury. So whether you're looking to get fitter or faster, we want a certain amount of stress on our body and that is going to get our results. But if you do too much, too soon, too often, we're going to see that you tip the scale and you get more injury than you do fitness uh, gains that you'd like there. So that's why it matters. And well, the way that we measure it, and the reason we've gone to this is because we need a simple way that can do it that's reliable and really takes into effect all of the different things that could contribute to it. So at its basic level, we measure the training load by multiplying the duration and minutes of an activity by the rate of perceived exertion that the athlete self-reports. So if you go for a run for an hour, 60 minutes, and you rate it as a four to 10 intensity, that would be 240 points for training load. And these arbitrary points are how we calculate how much you're doing compared to what you've done in the past. Now, in an ideal world, we would have some type of app or device that measured all of these things. But in reality, as of the time of this recording, there is not a single device that can capture every single thing that you have done, whether it's GPS data, nutrition, heart rate, sleep, travel, hydration, energy levels, life stress, what kind of Chinese takeout food you had last night. Those are all things that can affect a run that we're not necessarily able to calculate completely passively where you might be able to put some of this information in, but how do you weigh a stressful day at work versus dehydration? And it's really hard to calculate how that affects your effort level and your intensity of a workout. But there is one thing that can do all that. That's your brain. Your brain is really good at compiling all of those factors and telling you that that run 
today was harder than it was last week. Today, I rated that as a 5 out of 10, but last week that was a 4 out of 10. And maybe that's humidity. Maybe that is uh, stress. Maybe it's you had a bad night of sleep before. But it takes all those internal and external factors into account, and it tells you how hard it is. So it's very consistent and reliable for a way to judge the intensity of a workout. So if you're not familiar with RPE, rate of perceived exertion, here is a chart that shows you what that is. And it goes from 1 to 10. 1 is you're awake, but that's about it. You're not doing a whole lot. Maybe you're sitting watching some Netflix there. As you get to a 2 or 3, this is a lighter activity that you could do for a very long time. 4 to 6 is more moderate activity. Breathing might be strained, but can still hold a conversation for the most part. 7 to 8, you're getting into that anaerobic area. You'll see on the right side of the screen, we match these up with the zones, if you're familiar with heart rate zones. Um, so you're at your anaerobic threshold by the time you get to seven or eight. When you get to nine or 10, you're definitely a lot anaerobic and you're working pretty hard and you can't hold these efforts for a very long time. So this is a chart that you'll receive after any workout and it'll ask you, you can also update this from the calendar by opening a workout and you can do at the bottom, you can update it as well. So you go in and you hit your RPE and then you update your activity it tells you exactly then on your dashboard you'll go back and look at the training load chart and you'll look at the acute to chronic workload ratios that we showed earlier on and what I really like about this is because there are no two runs created equally right if you want to pause and look at this picture it's the same picture but there's minor differences and that's the same thing of a run it might be the same run that you do every Tuesday, but there's a couple different things that really do add up if you look hard enough, and we have to be able to quantify the difference between these. So I like that it doesn't require a device. You don't need to have a specific heart rate strap or a GPS watch even. It takes into account all the different factors that can contribute to intensity. I also like that it trains you to be aware of how hard you're working to make sure that you're sticking to the goal for that workout. You also don't have to do a lot of testing to see what it is because at a basic level, one of the, the drawbacks that people uh, will, will bring up to me about RPE is that, well, what if I'm not very good at rating my effort level? Don't worry about it. As long as you're consistent, that's fine because we're just comparing you to you. And although your four might be my three or my five might be your two, if we're consistent, we'll be able to quantify the training load to make sure that we are consistently tracking this information. So I think those are some really key valuable things about RP of why it should be something in every runner's vocabulary. So now if we look at this a little bit more, this training load chart, this is where you can find this on your dashboard. So when you log into the app and click on the menu and go to your dashboard, what you'll see is you'll find this graph of display. And we talked about the numbers that are up top, but we also say that there's the bars beneath the numbers that tell you the range of where you should be. Um, and that gives you an idea of where you can be. And I really like using this because you might look at it and say, all right, I, it's Thursday. I've got a run on Friday and Saturday, but I'm already at the bottom of that line. I you know, need to reduce my workouts or I shouldn't go as intense because I might be overtraining. And I think that's really important. So those numbers are there, but if you notice at the bottom, it also gives you this week's target range. So you can see, hey, I'm at 200 points for this week, but I can go up to 1,000 or I can go up to 1,600 actually. So I can get some good training in this week and I can plan accordingly and that's really helpful. Now the different colors break it down by the different zones of intensity. So zone one and two, you'll see are blue here or RPE of one to four. Zone three will be that five to six and that's in green. Zone four will be the yellow and seven and eight, and the orange and red will be your zone five. So you'll look and just see the differences there of how these measure up, and you can see, hey, you know, what's really going on and what does week to week look like and where you could potentially go with this. So it's really helpful. You can even look back in the past a little bit to see how you've done, and you can look out, hey, I had a really good eight weeks leading up to a race. 
look at what your training load looked like and how you progressed and how you distributed your efforts between different workouts as well. Now, we also have to realize that nothing magically happens Sunday night into Monday morning at the start of a new week that your body says, okay, you can do whatever you want, I'm ready to go. So we also need to incorporate a tool called acute to chronic workload ratios. And the reason this is, is studies have shown that there's a sweet spot between 80 and 130% of our average compared to what we're doing in the acute. So our acute is that previous seven days, our chronic is the average of the preceding four weeks to that. And if your acute is 80 to 130% of that average, you're reduced risk for injury with that. So that's why we look at this and we see that we've color coordinated these. So if you look at the numbers, if you're in the green, you're good, right? You keep progressing, keep maintaining, whatever your goal is. If you're getting in the yellow, you're at risk for over or under training, but you're not quite there. You might see this yellow kind of often, especially as you're building up, as you're peaking for a race, um, you might see, or just getting started, you might see these numbers a little bit higher. Now, when you get into the red, you're at risk for a little bit more injury. Now, notice the numbers will actually show you uh, the numbers of what you've done acutely the last seven days versus chronically the average for the preceding four weeks. So make sure that you're regularly updating your RPE with this and realize that if you're just getting started and you don't have five weeks of history with this, it's not going to be as accurate. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. But if, you're, if you've been training for a while and if you've got your watch synced, you can even backfill some of your data for a while. If you see that's in there and you update those RPEs, you'll get a really reliable way to look at this and a great way to tell you where you're at. A quick story about this before we wrap up is that I got an email actually last night about a athlete that I'm helping uh, cross country season and they were a little skeptical about this acute to chronic workload ratio, but they've had enough injuries in the past that they're really looking to have a breakthrough year. And so I get an email last night that he was at 127% of his acute to chronic ratio and he wanted to go for a five or six mile run to cap out the week. And he said, that's all right, you know, I'll be fine. Like I'm young, I'm okay, we'll go through this. So he gets about two miles into it and he, he emails me because he actually has to stop and call to get picked up. And he had gone over that 130% right at about that two miles is when his percentage would have been over. And it was almost instantaneously. And if you've seen a blog post from me in the past, I went in purposely up to 137 and got shin pain at the end of that run. And as soon as I went over 137, I got injured. So it is an important number to follow. Again, take it with a grain of salt. It's not guaranteeing that you will or will not get injured, but it's another piece of information to help you make a decision so that you can take all the benefits you want out of running and reduce your risk. So we hope you find these numbers useful. Um, please reach out to us if you have questions and we hope you enjoy.